last week we were both in Redwood Shores, California, Northern California, at the Oracle Analyst Summit. And they had a couple of different tracks. Um, you started out actually in the ERP and data track. So why don't you start out with giving a little information about what you learned, what you saw, what, you know, what was up there? First of all, it was a great time to uh, to see you in person, and we got to the through a lot of side discussions. I think that part of these conferences are about not necessarily, necessarily what you hear from the uh, subject matter experts from the you know the vendor, but all the discussions that you have around dinner and breaks and having a chance to really get the insights from some of these uh, people that work for Oracle and understanding what their personalities are to that actual product offerings that they represent. So I was actually involved in the ERP one, and the ERP is, um, the focus is still very similar to what some of their competitors are doing, that they're investing in data, data management, AI, innovation, to really kind of go back to where the data starts and the structure of the, uh, the core of these systems. and. It's the, really the ERP system. So they focused on new technology that is coming about. And it's all a lot of it is around additional features and new applications to tack on to the ERP systems. But similar to s some of the other vendors, there's still an issue with getting that data from the ERP systems to these business applications. So we'll call the ERP systems the enterprise applications. But the business applications, there's, there's still no great way to get it there. They, they say they have a way to get it there, but it's not in a format that's going to guarantee that uh, the quality of it is good. And then you still have that change management that we keep on talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. One other thing, I was also involved in the autonomous database, and a bunch of their um, updates are all centered around um, new features of uh, the growth of it around the Microsoft Azure and the, uh, the cloud and some other things regarding data, but we can't really talk about it because it's under embargo really for the rest of the week. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff um, that was under NDA. So I think it just kind of talking broadly, I went to both the, um, the HCM and the CX um, tracks mm -hmm. and from a really broad standpoint, um, I will say that I really liked, you know, some of the discussions just around embedded AI. Mm -hmm. um, I think what they're doing with Redwood and kind of some of the applications that they're building there. Um, one, I just really think like the UI is really nice and they're, they're making a big effort to kind of change that sort of legacy look and feel of Oracle products. You know, if you look at from the, the legacy to now, um, but where I feel like they're sort of missing the mark is they talk a lot about the product and what it does, but they don't talk a whole lot about what it does for you. And what I mean by that is there's not enough focus on the benefit and you know, we're a group of analysts, and so obviously we can come to our own conclusions, but I'm going to make the assumption that this similar presentation is being made to sales. And what I see is that conversation is very focused towards an IT professional and not necessarily recognizing new seats at the table. And That's a good point. In especially in HCM and CX, there are new buyers at the table. And so, you know, where I would kind of say that they maybe need to think about it from, from a CX, CRM, HCM perspective is recognizing the new buyers at the table and really going into that, what it can do for you beyond just what it does. And, and I think if they can do that, I really think they have a winner. And, you know, I'll give just one example and then we can move on because we have lots of other things to talk about. Um, you know, in comparing some of their, and there are some things that are that are under, under NDA that they are launching, but they have some features that are similar to like a day force or, or a work day. And they, where they may be winning on 
product features, they're going to lose on messaging. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, kind of, I think they've got to get that, that well, next, that next step. Do you think that and this is a, just an interesting subject? I see that exactly what you are, that companies are selling on features and functionality, but not business impact. And, and then they're not, companies don't see that ROI. They just see these are great features, but how do I get to that business impact, which is more important? Right. And I think that comes from an Oracle, I think is historically a very IT driven business where that's who they're talking to is, is IT. And with the economy, they're more often now talking to the CFO. They're, they're, the C-suite is more involved in the decision-making. It's not just IT. So they got to get that kind of that messaging right. So anyway, um, we will we'll have much more to share when we can share kind of what those what those product announcements are and then maybe we can help tell the story of of what it does for them <laughs> we can do the powerpoint form 